Hi, everybody. Um, my name's Piers. I'm a, a painter. Uh, I also do murals as well, uh, and sculptures, and I've started doing screen prints. Um, and I also, I studied theatre design at the Slade. I think that's quite pertinent to what I'm going to talk about as well. Uh, and more than that, I also studied acting, um, and I've done a lot of acting. And again, I think that's quite connected with um, the actors working with charged space. <coughs> so that's a little bit about me. Um, so I chose to talk about this book. I didn't want to put the image of this, because I didn't think this was as interesting as this. Um, but it's by Paul Virilio. Um, he's still alive, in fact, but he was born in 1932. So he was a, he was a boy when um, World War II started. Uh, and he was born in northern France. And at that point, when he was a boy, the Germans started building uh, the Atlantic Wall, which was a series of defence and ports and bunkers along the coast, kind of to prepare for a, an attack. Um, he wasn't actually allowed to visit the structures during the war because the, you know, the Nazis kept everybody back. Um, so he kind of discovered them after the war. Um, and then in the 1960s, he um, started documenting them, taking photographs of them. Uh, and then that's what he compiled into this book with some essays. Uh, I think, as I said, it was published in 1975. I think the uh, English version came out in 1992, I think, it took, it took a while. Um, but it's got five essays. Half of it's the essays, the other half are uh, uh, images. Um, so I'll just quickly run through the different essays. Um, the first one is about military space, talking about the dynamic geography of war, um, how war involves the ground, uh, the sea and the air. It's kind of three-dimensional. He talks about the fortress, which is the psychology of war about um, offence and defence. He talks about, another essay is about the monolith, um, that these bunkers now are monuments to what he calls total war. There's also an essay about typology, which he kind of has architectural diagrams about different types of bunkers. And then a final essay about the Nazi architect Albert Speer. Um, and Paul Verrini also comes from a kind of um, type of thinking they call architectural phenomenology, um, which is a philosophical study of architecture, which I'm sure Fisher would have known more about than I do. Um, architecture as human experience and so on. So that's kind of about Paul Verrini. I grew up in Portsmouth, which, as you know, yeah, sorry. I grew up in Portsmouth, which is a naval port, um, and I only started thinking this of this recently when I moved away. That when I go there, what I see are forts and cannons and the navy and naval ships, uh, and I think quite the essence of Portsmouth is war, really. Um, so I think. For me to be interested in the bunkers, I don't think it's that different. I think you, part of me is this kind of growing up with thinking about war. Um, and also what really interested me was the title, Bunker Archaeology. The idea that these, these bunkers are 70, 80 years old. Already they're kind of of archaeological significance. So already they're kind of drifting into the past, although they're quite modern. And the essays are really insightful, but what really inspired me, I think, are the photos. Um, as I said, half of the book is just photographs of bunkers. The photos don't have any people in it, it's just these bunkers in the landscape. Some of them are kind of um, disappearing into the sand, others are kind of tilting forwards. Um, and they're kind of, um, I don't know, relics of a lost time, of a lost mad period. And also what, I, what really fascinates me is the, the lines of the bunkers. The kind of, um, they really show the purpose of this is in the lines, I think. I think you just straight away see this is an aggressive 
destructive form. So I've visited the Normandy beaches a few times, um, and it's quite strange because you can see these massive um, blocks, and they've got tourists going in and taking photographs, um, and suddenly all of that's kind of lost. You know, these were points of, of destruction, maybe, and death, and now they've become a kind of tourist attraction. Um, it's kind of like people standing in front of the, the body of a dead monster and they're kind of taking trophy photographs, like if it was I don't know, King Kong or something. Um, and you can go inside a lot of them, they're kind of um, a, like a lot of abandoned places like this, really. There's this kind of sense of something happened there. Um, you still get a bit of the energy, but they're really kind of heavy, dark places inside. So this is a photograph I took, actually. It's not from the book. Um, this is in the north of France, in La Havre. Um, while a lot of the bunkers, kind of now, they're well kept, and they cut the grass around them, and, and they, they've all got signs, you can go and visit them. I found this one in a field off the side of a road. I had to climb over a fence to get into it. And uh, it was just sort of sitting there, lurking. And I think... Um, they were using it as a kind of place to, to keep cattle, the cows walking in and out of it. But even so, it's still got the same menace as, as when, it was, when it was built. And I think they were a design kind of from an engineering point of view, but I think aesthetically, I think they really, really, uh, they kind of really capture their, their, their purpose. And I think that they're kind of timeless monuments that are still um, close to their original moment of, of you know, creation. So although they're only 70, 80 years old, they seem like they could have been there for a thousand years. So I've often thought about these bunkers and, and how they relate to my work. Um, I always work with kind of hard, straight edges. Um, I couldn't say that's a direct influence for them, but there is a kind of, you know, a connection. For example, I did a mural recently uh, at a space called Eclectic in Waterloo. Um, and it was kind of monolithic, and only had three colours, strong um, edges. So there's definitely something about that kind of, um, you know, that aesthetic. I did a series of paintings called the black paintings, which are very hard and solid. And I think something about solidity from these as well, kind of um, impermeability, is also present in those paintings. Um, sometimes I play between hard and soft, um, in, in the sense like between black and, for example, sky blue, so the black is kind of very present and up close, with blue disappears. Um, which I think maybe, if you contrast this to the environment that it's sitting in. And another factor in my work is, is the idea of presence, and I think that comes from um, acting as well. As an actor, you want to have a lot of presence on the stage. You want to command presence, and I think that's what these things do as well. Um, you can't help your eyes with to draw to them they so got such presence. Um, and I've always been interested in the connection between <clears throat> modern people and early people and how we're still essentially the same. Um, and I think somehow this captures that kind of primal aggression that we still have, even though we've got you know, technology today. I think this is still connecting us to that very distant um, drive. Uh, and finally, the sense of time passing um, is something that I'm, I'm interested in, of, of things that will outlive us. I mean, I'm really interested in the pyramids, the Pyramid of the Sun in Mexico, um, Stonehenge, these kind of monuments that somehow 
we can reflect on as they will outlive us. Um, if you look at things from their point of view, we just are here for a blink of a second. Um, which I think, again, personally, I think this has got something of that. That is, is still there after 70, 80 years. Um, and unless they blow it up, which we're, they did with quite a few of them, um, it's just going to outlive us. So, uh, <coughs> I'll make that ten and a half minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.